fridge. <laughs> some people do a wusa. Some people do a Buddha. I do a prayer. And uh, let's get back to, let's hear some more Jerry Parsons. We'll be talking about this more um, during the month. I'll have more stuff on it. Um, uh, let's see. Let's get to his song. Uh, we heard Burner House Down. Let's get to his new one. Uh, this one is called uh, Drifting. This is a brand new from Jeremy Parsons it's called Drifting. And a matter of fact, we have that California cutie is right here on the line. Hey, Ashley. Hi there. Uh, How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, no problem. You have such a delicate voice. Oh, <laughs> I know. <thank> you. 
<laughs> my voice, it's like sounding loud compared to your little delicate bird-like voice, but it's good, I guess. But it doesn't, it's not like that when you're in a studio, huh? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Um, no in the yeah. much more prep and much more work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and matter of fact, my husband loves that song, One in One. The very first oh. time he, the very first time he heard it, he fell in love with it. And he's uh, he's very musically inclined. So when he likes a song, um, when it uh, when he first hears it, then I know it's a good song. That's how I know it's a good song. Um, I like both of them. I like the first one. I like Dare Ya. I like that uh, Get Up and Go. So uh, tell us about yourself and that song. I mean, is that is that your words? Is that is that uh, <laughs> did, did you write that or um, did someone write that for you? Oh yes, ma'am. I wrote that song myself. Um, I, I typically write all of my songs. Uh, the only song I did not write uh, that was only a cover was actually One in One. That's an original from uh, Robert Miles. But, um, yeah, Wadaria was uh, written by me in February of this year, and it was such an inspiring song even to myself. Uh, just a song about, you know, daring yourself to let go and push your own boundaries. Uh, so writing that was definitely therapeutic and uh, based on true events and true stories. So uh, I, like, base all of my music off of, events and things that have happened in my life and this song happened to be the perfect song for the moment that was going to Wow. And you know, you singing it like you're into it. <laughs> you singing it <laughs> like you're feeling it. Like, you know, I dare you to get up and go and that is something good to tell ourselves, especially when we trying to accomplish something and get to that next goal in life is to you know, sometimes you have to dare yourself to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, my mom always told me to push myself, so uh, telling myself and daring myself to just go out and do what I want to do and do what I believe in, uh, this song definitely resonates with all of that. Okay. So tell us a little about Ashley. Tell us a little bit about you, Miss Ashley. Um, uh, how did you come into writing music and deciding to be an artist and, you know, what – epiphany that you have one day and you said that's what I want to do <laughs> I want to perform I want to entertain oh well you know there are so many moments in my life where I can't come to the conclusion that I wanted to be an entertainer I wanted to write music and perform uh, when I was a little girl my dad taught me piano and voice and I knew that it was you know he was so good at it, it was something I wanted to do too of course looking up to both of my parents uh, and my folks took me to my very first concert, which happened to be uh, a Nelson brother concert. They are the twin sons of the late Ricky Nelson. Mm-hmm. So it was that moment where I saw them perform. They was live at Disney World uh, at the Epcot Center. And I got to see them, and in that moment I thought, oh, my goodness, I love what these guys are doing. The energy was so incredible and so vivid. I sat there and thought, this is what I want to do. And as you go through high school and you go through um, college, which I went through college, uh, right at that point, as I was starting college, I knew in the long run, I'll get my back, I'll get my bachelor's backup plan, but performing is ultimately what I want to do. And I knew going into my freshman year, and I know now, just graduating from college, uh, what I want to do, and it's what I've been pursuing throughout my entire college career. And it is just now starting to pick up as soon as I graduated, thankfully. Okay. So what college are you going to? Did you graduate from? Excuse me. I did. I graduated from the University of North Texas. I got my bachelor's in business law. Yep. And uh, it was an absolute phenomenal experience, a great school. Uh, Mm -hmm. I started my first two years up in the University of Tulsa and finally graduated over here uh, in Texas. And amazing experience, learned so much, and uh, very important to have a backup plan in education. It has only Mm -hmm. helped me further in my music career, believe it or not. That's good. So were you going to be, is the backup plan to be an attorney if all else fails? No. Um, I mean, I could go that route with like an entertain, you know, entertainment ter- attorney. Um, but okay. in the long run, I studied business law to own my own record label eventually and uh, basically run my you. own label. You're so good, <laughs> yeah. girl. I tell you, girls rock. I mean. <laughs> it's always full circle. It's always about the music for me. So studying business uh-huh. law to own my own label was something that was really important to me. Well, well that's good. You know, it's good to take uh, the education route that's going to lead you to eventually what it is you wanted to do. With me, I knew I wanted to have my own business. So at a certain point, see, I had kids. 
<laughs> I, I wasn't, I didn't start out like that at 22 or 23, but uh, I had kids and <laughs> as my kids were getting older, I decided, you know, I said, you know what, I have to figure out something I wanted to do uh, with myself. And so that's what I did. I started taking the education route uh uh, because I had kids, you know, I I had the opportunity to go back and finish my degree. So I had the, I could turn the wheel then. I could turn it in a direction which I wanted to take it. And I did. And, and I'm glad that I did. Uh, radio just came up as a surprise. That was one of the unexpected <laughs> surprises. <laughs> but but it is good to definitely take that route and do what it is that, uh, get just get that paper behind you to do what it is that you want to do so was your parents uh, supportive of this decision absolutely um you know it's very imperative that we i have four other siblings so it's very imperative that we got our uh degrees it was just something you know my both my folks um have their bachelor's and master's Uh, so having an education was extremely important to them but at the same time my mom and dad have always stood behind me when it came to music Uh, Even since I was a little girl, my mom said she saw it in me when I was super, super young. And you think, oh, that's just my mom. You know, she she thinks I'm the best. Uh, Mm -hmm. But when it came to the point where my folks said, after getting my bachelor's, I thought, well, maybe I should get my master's just in case and have, like, a double security. And it got to the point where my mom, I knew my mom and dad really believed in me when they said, why don't you take a year off and let's do music and let's see how far we can come. If it goes nowhere, then you know, we do the master's thing and you go do something different. But if it, it's going somewhere. So it's it definitely got to that point where I recognized how much my folks believed in me. But I've had points and moments in my career where I didn't believe in myself as much as my folks did. And they really picked me up to the point where I became my own best friend. I believed in myself more than anybody. Uh, so I, I was very, very lucky and very blessed uh, and still blessed to have parents that I do who are very, very supportive. That's right. That's going to help you go a lot, a long way, is to have that support system. Because when you have that support system, when something happens and something may not necessarily go that route and uh, you need a shoulder to cry on, you know you have that shoulder to cry on. If you don't have that support system and something goes bad, you've got to hear someone saying, well, I told you. <laughs> you know, that's, exactly. that's the difference between having the support and not having the support. The, having the support is when it goes bad, you've got that person that's going to say, hey, this is going to get better. We're just going to kick the dust off our feet and keep it moving and go on to the next one as opposed to the negative. As, you know, I told you so. I told you you couldn't do this and, and things of that sort. So that's very good. A shout out to your parents because that's really good uh, uh, for supporting you and that allowing you to be able to live that dream, you know, go to college and not just what they wanted you to do, something that you wanted to do to help you in your future. So that's really good. Definitely. So what's so what's going on exciting for uh, Miss Ashley? Oh, my goodness, so many things. Uh, I, upcoming, you know, next month, I'm supposed to be having some live performances. Uh, and, of course, in the next year, I'm looking to um, finish out an EP album almost. And it should All be done right. uh, by early next year. Yes, in the next couple of months, actually, because next year is right around the corner. My next mm-hmm. single, Trapped, will be released in uh, January or February. And that is a song to definitely look out for. Uh, one of my favorites I've ever written. A very uh, dark and soulfully um, powerful words and meanings behind it that I think everyone can absolutely relate to in any sense of form. Just by the given title, Trapped, I'm sure you can already guess what it's about. Uh, so that is super exciting and uh, more interviews and press and just kind of putting myself out there and building my fan base and talking to wonderful people like you. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Well, you certainly are yeah. hand headed the right way and you definitely have the right type of attitude to get you there. You know, just, you know, stay humble. <laughs> You're oh, well, already you. there. You. <laughs> so, you, you know, that's good. And we need a lot more humble and positive Millennials, that's what I call you. <laughs> to have a, a daughter. I, I'm assuming that you're about 24, 25. Yes, Maybe I, even younger. I am uh, 23. I will be 24 in December. Oh, you're not, so oh almost, okay. Well, you're 24. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're almost there. <laughs> you might as well just say you're 24 because it's right around the corner. Um, so that's. You know, that's I have really been. I, I've been saying I'm 24. Then my mom will correct me and say, no, you're 23. And then I said I was 24, and I realized, oh, my gosh, I'm almost 24. My little brother's yes. in college. I'm really, really old. 
<laughs> well, you're not. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you are not. Oh, are you kidding? Your mom probably wants you to say you're 23 because 